Welcome to today's screencast, Concurrency Utilities for Java EE. I'm Anthony Lai. I work in the Java EE team and is the SPAT lead for JSR236. And we'll be discussing what's included in JSR236 Concurrency Utility for Java EE 1.0. Concurrency Utilities for Java EE is a new addition to the Java EE 7 platform. The goal of this JSR is to provide a simple standardized API for using concurrency from Java EE application components without compromising container integrity while still preserving the Java EE platform's fundamental benefits. The APIs are mainly extension from the Java SE concurrency utilities. Developers who are already familiar with the APIs in the Java Util concurrent package in Java SE, in particular, executor service and threat factory interfaces should find it very easy to adapt to the J APIs provided by this JSR. The concurrency utilities for Java EE specifies four types of managed objects. Each managed object implements one of the following four programming interfaces. Managed executor service, managed scheduled executor service, managed threat factory, and context service. We will walk through each of these interfaces and discuss more about managed objects a bit later. In addition to the managed objects, we are also going to talk about some other features that are provided in this JSR. We will talk about context propagation, task event notification, and how transactions are being handled. First of all, what are managed objects? Managed objects are provided by the Java EE product provider, also commonly referred to as Java EE container or application server. Each managed object implements one of the four programming interfaces mentioned in the previous slide. Each Java EE product provider could provide some ways to allow application developers or system administrators to configure these managed objects. For example, in Glassfish, these managed objects can be configured from the Glassfish GUI console or by using CLI command line interfaces. Other vendors may provide similar ways to configure these managed objects. Multiple instances of each type of managed objects could be configured, each with a different set of configuration properties, and each using a different lookup name. Once configured, application could look up these managed objects. This can be done by using JNDI lookup in the code or by using the add resource annotation using the configured lookup name, just like other types of resources in the Java EE platform, such as JDBC data source or JMS connection factories. A specific configure managed object can be looked up by each application component using the lookup name specified during configuration time. Uh, each Java EE product provider is required to provide a default pre-configured managed object of each of the four types for use by applications. These default managed objects can be looked up using standard JNDI names that starts with java colon com slash default or through resource ingestion when no lookup name is specified. They help minimize the amount of configuration required. For example, in applications where the developers do not envision requiring special configurations for the managed objects that are used in the applications, they can simply use these default managed objects in their applications. Then application deployers and system administrators do not need to configure additional managed objects when deploying and configuring this application. Now we are going to go through the four programming interfaces that are implemented by the managed objects and are available for use by Java EE application developers. The first one is Managed Executor Service. It is used for submitting tasks to run asynchronously on threads that are provided by the Java EE product providers. Tasks are typically written by the Java EE application developers and are required to be implementation of either the runnable or callable interfaces. 
It is important that all threads used by Java EE applications running inside a Java EE container should be provided and managed by the Java EE container. It allows the Java EE container to better manage its resources, for example, for performance reasons, such as to optimize the overall server throughput, to provide monitoring capabilities to the threads, such as through GUI monitoring console, as well as controlling the lifecycle of these threads, among others. Another advantage of using managed thread for running a synchronous task is that the Java EE container can also handle the propagations of application contextual information to the managed thread that runs the task. We will cover context propagation in more details later in the screencast. Back to managed executed service. It contains various forms of the execute, submit, invoke all, and invoke any APIs. Submit methods are used for submitting a synchronous task that return a handle called future, where the code can use to check for the execution status of the task, to cancel the task, or to wait for and retrieve the result of the task. Execute is similar to submit, except that it doesn't return the future object. Invoke all and invoke any methods allow submissions of a collection of tasks and provide a way to wait for and retrieve the results of either all tasks or only the first task that completes. All of the APIs are inherited from the executor service interface in the Java SE concurrent package. In fact, we did not introduce any new method in the managed executor service. This allows application developers to use APIs from Java SE concurrency package that they are already familiar with in their Java EE applications. The next interface that is provided by the managed objects is managed scheduled executor service. It is used for scheduling tasks to run after a given delay, to run periodically, or at some custom schedule that is controlled programmatically. Similar to managed executor service, these tasks are also run on threads that are provided by the Java EE container. The managed schedule executor service interface extends from both the managed executor service that we just discussed in the previous slide and from the scheduled executor service interface from Java SE. In addition to the APIs mentioned in the previous slide, managed schedule executor service also provide methods such as schedule, which allow running a task after a certain period of time, and schedule at fixed rate and schedule with fixed delay, which submits tasks to run periodically at fixed intervals. An overloaded form of the schedule API is added to the managed schedule executor service interface to support repeated tasks at custom intervals. The intervals are decided programmatically by passing in an object that implements a new interface called trigger. This provides great flexibility in how frequently a periodic task should be run. Again, the majority of the API in the managed schedule executor service interface are extensions from the Java SE counterpart that are available since Java SE 5. So many developers should already be familiar with them. The next interface that is provided for use by Java EE application developers is Managed Thread Factory. It provides a standard mechanism for Java EE applications to obtain a managed thread from the Java EE container. Most Java EE containers discourage applications from creating plain Java threads. Those threads are not maintained by the Java EE container and may interfere with the proper operations of the container. Also, application contexts are not propagated to these threads. We will talk more about context propagations in a couple of slides. Again, instead of reinventing the wheel, we simply extend from the thread factory interface from the Java SE concurrent package, inheriting the same API for obtaining a thread. The managed thread factory is useful for obtaining threads to work with asynchronous servlets that was added to the servlet 3.1 specs in Java EE 6. It is also useful in advanced use cases, such as when the Java EE application needs to create custom executors with its own thread pool obtained from the container. 
The last of the four interfaces implemented by managed objects is context service. This interface is a bit different from the previous three. It is a new interface that does not extend from the Java SE concurrent package. The context service interface contains a few different forms of an API called create contextual proxy for applications to create contextual proxy objects. Contextual proxy objects are proxy for plain non-managed Java objects. They are similar to proxy objects in the Java lang reflect package in that the proxy objects implement the same interface methods as the original object. The difference is that with contextual proxy objects, container context information is captured at creation time. After creation, the contextual proxy object could then be persisted or passed to a different application component where the proxy method is invoked at a later time. The capture container context will then be applied on the thread where the proxy object is invoked. Contextual proxy objects can be used in advanced use cases where information such as user identity needed to be propagated from one application component to another, such as in a workflow system, in which case the contextual proxy object would be invoked on the same thread as the one that is running the application component. It can also be used for requesting task listener notification callbacks to be run under the same container context as that in the application component where the task was submitted. Contextual proxy objects can also be used as tasks for submission to managed executor service or managed threat factory. Let's talk about context propagation. It is one important feature of concurrency utilities for Java EE. The types of context listed in the spec includes class loading, JNDI namespace, and security identity. Each Java EE application component are run under some or all of these contexts. When using managed executor service or managed scheduled executor service to submit a task to be run asynchronously on a container managed thread, the Java EE container would capture such context information at the time of task submission and reapply the context information on the container managed thread that is used for running the task just before the task is run. The result is that the task will be able to load classes from the application that submitted the task to perform JNDI lookup at if it is running in the same application as the run that submitted the task and to run under the same login user as the one that submitted the task. In the case of managed thread factory, the container context will be captured when its new thread method is called to retrieve a managed thread. When the thread is started, the capture context will be propagated to the thread before calling the run method of the runnable task that is passed into the new thread method. For context service, the container contexts are captured when the create contextual proxy API is called to create a contextual proxy object. The container context is restored when the proxy object method is invoked. If it is invoked from a different application component, the context of that application component will be restored after the proxy method is completed. The types of container context we propagated for each managed object is configurable. It is typically done as part of the managed object configuration done by an administrator. The types of container context do not need to be restricted to the three types listed in this slide. The concurrency EE spec allows Java EE containers to support propagation of additional context types. However, the three types of container context listed here, class loading, JNDI namespace, and identity, are required to be supported and propagated in the default managed objects provided by the Java AE containers. Another feature that the concurrency utilities for Java AE spec provide is the ability to get notifications on the progress of tasks that are submitted to managed executor service and managed scheduled executor service. Tasks to be submitted to these interfaces could optionally be associated with an object that implements a new interface called Managed Task Listener. Once associated, the Managed Task Listener implementation object would get notified when the task is submitted, when the task is not able to start, such as when it is cancelled, when the task is about to start processing, and when the task has completed running, either successfully or has failed with an exception. 
The notification APIs in the Manage Task Listener provides information such as the task, the Manage Executive Service, or Manage Schedule Executive Service, and the future objects for the task submission to allow the applications to perform operations such as resubmitting or canceling the task. Task Events Notification is useful when an application wants to follow the progress of the task, such as if it wants to report the status of the task to an user or to resubmit the task if the task has failed. The last feature that we would like to talk about is how transaction management is supported in the managed objects. When a task is run on a different thread from the one that submitted the task, as in the case in Managed Executor Service and Managed Schedule Executor Service, or when a thread is obtained from Managed Thread Factory, transaction is not propagated from the application thread where the task is submitted or where the thread is obtained to the Managed thread where the task is run. However, application could still demarcate transactions in the task by using the user transaction interface from the Java Transaction API Specification, or JTA. Java EE containers are required to provide user transaction to the task, so a task implementation can begin, commit, or roll back a transaction using the user transaction if it wanted to. As discussed before, contextual proxy objects created from the context service interface can be invoked from within another application component. In this case, we provide two choices for the application developers regarding transaction management. One option is to run the proxy method under the same transaction, and any resources used by the contextual proxy object method will be enlisted to the same transaction. Another option is to run the contextual proxy object method under a different transaction. In this case, the transaction of the application component will be suspended. The proxy method will use user transaction for transaction demarcation. Then after the proxy method returns, the transaction of the invoking application component will be restored. The choice of option can be specified programmatically when the contextual proxy object is created. That concludes our overview of the features provided by the concurrency utilities for Java EE 1.0. To sum up, the specification provides asynchronous capabilities to Java EE application components. Because most APIs extends from the Java SE concurrent API. It allows Java SE developers a simple migration path to the Java EE platform by providing consistency between the two platforms. It also defines mechanism for Java EE containers to provide managed objects for use by applications for submitting tasks and for obtaining managed threads. And it provides support for transaction demarcation within tasks and handle the propagation of application context to the running task. With the concurrency utilities for Java EE, developers now have the tools to do more advanced asynchronous processing in the Java EE applications. Concurrency utilities for Java EE is now supported in Glassfish 4, the Java EE 7 SDK. Please download it and try it out. To find out more about this and other Java EE 7 technologies, follow us on Twitter, join us on Facebook, watch us on YouTube, and read about Java E7 on the Aquarium blog and at glassfish.org. Thank you for listening.